My project has been working with the ontogeny of these di of the reptiles and other vertebrates that we find in the Saints and Sinners Quarry. Um, Saints and Sinners Quarry was discovered in 2009. Its total area is about half the size of this classroom, and it is part the. It is an old uh, desert oasis, so we get lots of lacustrine sediments. There's cement. It's a sandstone with a carbonate cement, and um, it was its uh, location is just barely west of Dinosaur, Colorado. It's barely inside of the Utah border. Um, these specimens that we pull out are very small. Most of the most of the dinosaurs and other reptiles are actually smaller than um, tree squirrels today. And in the last couple of years that we've been digging there, we have excavated, labeled, cataloged, and mapped over 10,000 bones. There's a lot. When we're at the quarry, then our biggest problem is not finding the bones, it's deciding where we're going to break the rock because we know that we're breaking specimens that we can't see. Like every cut of rock we have, then we can see where we have cut through bones. In the species that we're pulling out, or the taxa that we're pulling out, we have Sphenosuchians, which are, share a common ancestor with modern crocodiles. Um, we also have probably the world's best collection of drapanosaurs. And we have coelophys, different types of coelophysoids. Um, it was the coelophysoids that were discovered first. They have some of the largest bones in the quarry, and most of their bones are at the surface and really easy to see. What we're doing with, since we have such a variety of, um, of taxa, is we're studying their ontogeny. <coughs> ontogeny is the study of the development of a creature from its juvenile stage to maturity until it dies. Um, with the reason we do this is because virtually no animals are, exact, are an exact copy of the adult. They go, undergo quite a metamorphosis as they develop. Can you click again? This is an image of a four-month-old uh, human skeleton. Can you click again? And that's in scale with a, a mature human male. And so the sizes are very different if you click it again. But not only are the sizes different, the proportions of every major part of the body are radically different. With, a, with the, for example, the skull is roughly 25% the length of the body with an infant. The shape of the rib cage is much more, is closer to a sphere compared to an adult. The hands are huge compared to the rest of the body. Uh, and even the number of bones is different. There's 206 bones in the adult human, and I think there's over 300 in an infant because they're not, they haven't fused together. If some, something came along and had no concept of what a human being was and just had the bones to go on, it would be reasonable to assume even that the infant and the adult are completely different species because of just the radical differences in them. This happens with dinosaurs too. The fossil record is definitely incomplete, and but we're starting to think that these uh, dinosaurs and reptiles definitely underwent a similar metamorphosis. You click again. This is Mosasaur. Um, that is a penny for scale. The, this specimen is about 20 centimeters long. And for a, quite some time it was labeled as its own species. You click again. However, we're starting to believe that Coloradiosaurus is most likely an adult Mosasaur that these are actually the same. You can see that the skull, that the ratio of the skull to the length of the body is radically different. And even the, the size of the eye, which takes up most of the skull in the, in the juvenile, is just a very small portion of the adult skull. Um, Nasospot, I have trouble with this dinosaur's name. Nasospondylus, 
uh, we have a great record of that. And so we can actually see the different growth stages from a juvenile to an adolescent to an adult. And we can have a pretty clear record of how the skull structure changes. So what we want to what we want to do is find is determine the age of the specimens we have. Um, Sphenosuchians and Drapanosaurs are known in other parts of the world, but not they don't have the same quantity of specimens, and they don't have the same quality of specimens. We actually have fully articulated specimens of Drapanosaurs and Sphenosuchians. It means that they that the bones are where they were in life and they're articulated how they should be. In order to find there, find there we could, or with this quarry, we can't use bone texture. The sediments have ruined the original texture on the outside of the bone. Not all reptiles have bone plates that fuse like modern mammals. The brain case bones, all our brain cases have been crushed slightly. And the vertebral components have separated slightly upon preservation. So what we'll do to determine the age are these things called growth lines. As an organism grows and develops, it goes through growth cycles. These are roughly, roughly one growth cycle is equal to one year. And it leaves an actual change in the structure of the bone. So when an animal is young, then it goes through growth cycles, it goes through a period of rapid growth things want to reach their maximum size as quickly as possible to avoid the maximum number of predators. But when it reaches maturity, we can see up here, it needs further magnification to see the different growth lines. And that's how we can tell the difference between a juvenile specimen and an adult. Um, those, or actually, can you go back? Growth lines can actually survive fossilization. This specimen is a thin section from a femur of a T-Rex. And so they survive fossilization really well. Um, can you click again? Now growth lines don't tell the average age of the body. Can you do one more quick? They do not, they're not quite a tree ring. The bones get continually reworked, and so the innermost growth rings will eventually get dissolved into the bone. So instead of telling us exactly how many years old the creep that a particular creature was, it tells us what stage of growth and development it was in. Um, with these growth lines, then we will be able to confirm that we actually do have the eight new species that we think we do, rather than a juvenile of an existing species. The ones that we have are a little smaller than most of the other Spinosuchians or Drapanosaurus that have been found in other parts of the world. So what we've been doing is trying to find growth lines in specimens from the T Saints and Sinners quarry. This is a coelophysis bone. Uh, we've been looking for femurs and humerus. The long bones of the body have the best growth lines. They actually get reworked the least. Um, these are the specimens what we're, that we have. We will use them to make a thin section we're probably going to have to reinforce them with a polymer because these bones are about as soft as um, goldfish crackers. You can actually, you can actually crush them with your with your thumbnail, uh, without pretty easily. Um, we'll make thin sections, and what we'll do, keep on going, is we will look at the thin sections first under a microscope. Initially, we might not see growth rings. The, the Nugget Sandstone has, has undergone some extensive hydrocarbon bleaching. There's basically no organics left. All the bone that's left of the bone is hydroxyl apatite. So we'll use um, polarizing filters to see if there's anything left in the, in the uh, apatite. And if that doesn't work, then we'll try and dye the bone just in a hope that there's something left in the structure that the dye can go in and make the, the growth lines visible once again. And hold on. That is it. That's what Dr. Britt and I have been working on.